and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Israelites, now that your knowledge has increased on major corporations and small businesses having altars dedicated to idols in their establishments, now that you are aware when you support and shop at these places, a covenant is being forged, it is time for you to understand the behind the scene effect as well as the purpose of the evil altars. You must understand how the covenants you made by supporting these businesses are legally tying you to their demonic altars. The Most High said, do not focus on the seen things, but the unseen, because the seen things are temporary and the unseen is eternal. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. When you focus on the seen, all you see is a business that has the products that you need to live your everyday life. If you can look past what's in front of you and you truly see with your spiritual eyes, that business become a place where Israelites are sacrificing themselves to evil altars unknowingly. When Israelites continue to support these businesses, they are renewing the evil covenants that has them bound. This is why it is important, Israelites, not to fight with flesh. If there is a disagreement, attack the spirit. Remember, the Most High is a spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It is important that you address everything spiritually. We are spirit beings housed in a human body. The kingdom of darkness want you to focus on the scene to keep you in bondage. In order for your enemies to keep you bound, they have to make you believe they are helping you. In addition, they deceive you into believing they are your friends. By setting up businesses in your neighborhoods, the heathens can observe you to make sure their curses or sorcery is working. In addition, they have to keep you close to study your every move. The heathens made you believe they are helping your community. The truth is they are setting up evil altars in your neighborhood to keep you bound. How many Asian, Middle Eastern, Indian business owners that make a profit from setting up businesses in your neighborhood reinvest into your communities? If the heathens truly had your best interests in mind, they would give back. Instead, we see the heathens calling the police on you, mistreating you in their stores. When they get angry, they express the way they really feel. Many Israelites spend billions of dollars supporting these businesses in their communities, helping the heathens create generational wealth for their children, helping the heathens build their community while your communities remain desolate. This is why the scriptures inform us to renew our minds. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you renew your minds, you will not let their fake smile deceive you. When the heathens embrace black culture, it is not to bring change. It is a disguise to keep you defeated. Some Israelites believe when the heathens embrace them and treat them like humans, they are your friends. While other Israelites are holding on to this false hope of one day, the heathens would care about them. The heathens had no problem lynching your ancestors, take a selfie in front of the body and share it with their like-minded friends on a postcard. The Most High said you live in the land of your enemies. Yah is not a man that he would lie. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? 
It is time that you accept the heathens pretend to love you, but they do not like you and they never will. If what I'm saying is false, why we repeat the same cycle of racism and discrimination in every generation? Open your eyes, Israelites. You live among your enemies. The altars in the heathens establishment is not only for the heathens to make money and live off your wealth. The purpose of the altar is to sacrifice you to their idols. Many Israelite spirits are enslaved by many heathens and Israelites evil altars and they do not know. Today, you will find out how the evil altars in your neighborhood disguised as businesses are affecting you. An agreement must be established before the kingdom of darkness can carry out its plans. The altar that are disguised as businesses cannot affect a person unless the individual interact with the cursed things. The idol hiding behind the altar cannot jump on you and demand anything from you without an agreement. The curses and spells the workers of iniquity place on their products and food will affect the people who consume the food and utilize the products. When you interact with the cursed things, you give the kingdom of darkness the opportunity to forge a covenant with you. When you bring the cursed things into your house and the members of your household interact with the cursed things, everyone is affected. If you do not get rid of the cursed thing by burning it and repent and ask the Most High to cleanse you from the cursed things you consume, your household and you will be enslaved to that heathen's altar. When the Most High established the everlasting covenant with Abraham, Yah said, if you obey me and walk uprightly before me, I will make you a father of many nations. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. The Most High said he would transfer the same covenant made with Abraham to his descendants for an everlasting covenant. When Sarah had Isaac, the Most High said he would transfer the everlasting covenant made to Abraham to Isaac's descendants. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. Before the Most High could transfer the everlasting covenant to Isaac and then Jacob's descendants, the Israelites, they first had to agree to the terms of the covenant and establish the covenant before the Most High can carry out his plans for his people. Our ancestors did establish the covenant with the Most High to gain access to the promised land. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water, that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he hath said unto thee, and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day, not only did our ancestors establish a covenant with the Most High, they also established a covenant for their descendants after them. As the blood descendants of the Israelites, we are heirs to Abraham's everlasting covenant, even though we were not present when the covenant was made. A covenant can be generational. You can pass generational blessings to your seed, or you can pass generational curses to your seed by a covenant. Before anything can take place, an agreement must be established. 
the scripture said, can two walk together unless they agree? Can two walk together except they be agreed? The businesses in your communities with evil altars cannot affect you unless you interact with the cursed things. The workers of iniquity present the cursed things to you by supplying your communities with amenities that it is lacking. Grocery stores, restaurants, hospitals, schools, and many other establishments. You believe the heathen business is there to support and help develop your communities. However, that is not the truth. If the heathen's intention were to help our communities, we would be prospering as a people. Instead, we are at the bottom. If Tracy, the heathen, have a business and she asks a worker of iniquity to help make her business prosper, the idol behind the evil altar the worker of iniquity serve will ask Tracy for a sacrifice and give Tracy the terms of the covenant. By the way, the people who seek the workers of iniquity to fix their problems are being deceived in the process. They do not realize the same evil deed they plan for another person's demise will backfire back on them and their bloodline. The kingdom of darkness never revealed their true intentions. If they did, nobody would seek them for a solution. There is no truth found in the kingdom of darkness. If Tracy accepts the terms, she forged a covenant with the idol hiding behind the evil altar. The worker of iniquity will give Tracy something to place in her business. On the other hand, Tracy can build an altar to that idol and place that altar in her business. The ritual Tracy have to do can consist of anything the idol asks of her. The idol can ask Tracy to bring souls to tie to the altar. The worker of iniquity can cast a spell in the business to affect everyone that purchased from the store. In addition, sell products that are cursed. An Israelite that is not aware or in tune with the Holy Spirit and the voice of the Most High cannot take heed to the warning from the Most High. That individual will purchase from the store and become a victim to the worker of iniquity, evil altar. That altar will have that individual spirit enslaved. How many heathen businesses have you entered, noticed an altar, and never did anything about it? Some of you are tied to evil altars and you do not know. Can you comprehend how the heathens come into your neighborhood, build successful businesses in your community, while you are living in poverty and hopelessness? Now that you are legally bound to their altars, the workers of iniquity is controlling you as well as the idol hiding behind the altar. What does it mean to have your spirit enslaved to an evil altar? The worst kind of imprisonment is spiritual imprisonment. That is when your spirit, the real you, is enslaved in the spirit realm. Most people do not realize they are enslaved spiritually because they are walking freely in the physical realm. The kingdom of darkness want you to believe you are free. That way you will never recognize the unclean spirit controlling your every move. The spirit realm is where everything takes place first. What you see in the physical realm is the result of what took place in the spirit realm. When you sleep and you have visions and dreams, those dreams and visions are not to be ignored. The dreams are revealing what is happening to you right now and the future. In addition, the dreams are revealing events that will take place in the future or presently. The scriptures reveal to us that the Most High will speak to us by dreams. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. The Most High will allow you to see your spiritual state in the spirit realm. The reason the Most High allow you to see what is happening to you, to give you the opportunity to change the outcome. The Most High will show you the specific spirits hindering your progress in the physical realm. The Most High will send you warnings by dreams. Israelites, it is important for you to recognize the symbols and ask the Most High to give you the interpretation of your dreams and visions. Only the Most High can give you the interpretation of your dreams. Just as when Joseph confirmed to the prisoners who had vivid dreams and were seeking the interpretation. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Only the anointed individual, the Most High gave the gift of interpreting dreams, can decode dreams properly.
Do not believe the false prophets out here who use divination and familiar spirits to decode dreams. King Saul was guilty of using a woman with a familiar spirit and the Most High took the kingship from King Saul and the tribe of Benjamin. Yah gave the kingship to David from the tribe of Judah. You do not want to seek anyone with a familiar spirit. The anointed of the Most High must have the Holy Spirit to give you the correct interpretation. Israelites, I am not a dream interpreter. I can only share what I know. Israelites, the Most High used symbols to speak to you in the dream. If you see yourself buying a house, the dream do not indicate you're going to buy a house in the physical realm. Rarely ever your dreams are literal. You have to decode the symbols using the word of the Most High. If you are tied to an evil altar, the symbols you will see in your dream consist of seeing yourself under a tree. A tree is representing the altar. If you see yourself trapped in a cage or behind bars in a jail, do you see yourself tied up? You dream you are in a car and somebody else is always driving the car. Those are a few of the many symbols the Most High will use to reveal to you that your spirit is enslaved to an evil altar. If those symbols repeat itself, the Most High wants you to address the situation and you must seek deliverance. There are multiple ways to forge covenants. There are verbal covenants when you say things such as, I am poor. The scripture said, death and life is in the power of the tongue. When you say you are poor, you forge a covenant with the spirit of poverty. Covenants can be forged in your mind with your thoughts. When the kingdom of darkness plant their wicked imaginations in your minds, you have to cast down the wicked imaginations just as the scriptures instruct us to do. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If you do not cast down the wicked imaginations, you will forge a covenant with the unclean spirits seeking an agreement. The other effective way most Israelites are forging covenants is in the spirit realm. The workers of iniquity fight you in the spirit realm. They do not fight in the flesh. The spirit realm is where everything takes place before it manifests in the physical realm. The workers of iniquity understand the spirit realm. That is how they keep you defeated and you have no idea who the enemy attacking you. The heathens place their altar in their establishments. You unknowingly interact with the cursed things purchased or consumed from the business. The worker of iniquity is projecting wicked spirits at you from their evil altars. In the spirit realm, the unclean spirits come to forge a covenant with you through deception. The unclean spirit will mask itself in the face of someone you trust. You believe the message is from the Most High when it is not and you forge a covenant with the unclean spirit. Not rebuking and canceling dreams from evil altars will result in a covenant forge. To put it all together, when you interact with the cursed items in your possession, the cursed items help the unclean spirits from the evil altar identify you. The idol from the evil altar will send tormenting spirits to oppress your life. In the spirit realm, the workers of iniquity will send the evil spirits to forge covenants with you. Since most Israelites do not know how the spirit realm operate, they ignore their dreams and visions. By default, the workers of iniquity is successful in tying your spirit to their wicked altars. Many Israelites will live a defeated life until he or she realize what is happening and seek deliverance. Many Israelites will blame the curses for their downfall. The truth is your spirit is enslaved to a wicked altar. Remember, the curses from Deuteronomy chapter 28 is on the wicked Israelites who refuse to repent. The Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law. All of this is happening behind the scenes, Israelites. Most people never look into anything beyond what they can see. They only want to scratch the surface. In the flesh, most people see a business with an altar dedicated to a God the heathens serve. The heathens inform you the shrine in their establishments is their way to display their religious belief. 
Many Israelites believe them and support their business. In the spirit realm, the unseen world where everything is eternal, the shrine is an altar dedicated to idols. The workers of iniquity use these altars to keep you defeated as a people. They set up their evil altars in your neighborhood to prevent you from building your communities. They use their religion as a weapon to disable you. All of your wealth is transferred to them while your neighborhoods remain impoverished. Israelites, it is important that you pray against evil altars regardless if you believe you are not enslaved to an evil altar. Pray for your brothers and sisters who are trapped and cannot see. The scriptures say pray all kinds of prayer and pray for each other. The prayers of a righteous person avail much. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Send the fire of the Most High to the wicked altars to destroy them, Israelites. Do not be afraid to do this. The Most High is with you. Spiritual warfare prayer is a must. The Most High has a reason to why he command his people to live among the heathens and not to join them. The heathen system is designed to keep you in sin. If you are righteous before the Most High, Yah will fight for you and he will protect you. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You have to be vigilant, Israelites. Do not leave room to the kingdom of darkness to oppress you. You have to look past what's in front of you. Allow the Most High to transform your minds. Beware with whom you are forging covenants with. Remember, the Most High will honor all covenants. Take advantage of the abundance of knowledge the Most High is making available to you. Keep your focus on the Most High and allow Yah to direct your steps. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey, and drink the blood of the slain.